<clears throat> okay, in this video we're going to use similar right triangles to help with slope. So otherwise we're just going to try to get an understanding of picking two points and finding the slope of that and seeing what happens here. Okay, so if you look over on the left I have the slope is M. M represents the, the symbol for slope equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So you have to have two points here. And I do. I have one A and one B. Uh, red, A's in red, of course. B's in blue. So I pick two points. All right. Now, understand the, what, the most common problem is that kids will put X first on top and then Y. Or they'll put run first and then rise. It's the opposite way. It's the change in Y. So otherwise, this really is the change in Y over the change in X. These are all the different ways you can see it. All right. And change means like subtraction. So you're taking the two y values in both points and subtract them. <clears throat> and you're taking the y value, uh, the x values in both points, and you're subtracting them. You're, you're finding how much did they change. And you got to make sure you put the y first. Now y is represented as rise. Uh, the y value is the y, is the rise. So the change, how much is it, it's rising by. And the x values run. I mean, think about the x. The X is on the horizontal axis. It's going across. You run across the ground. Rise, you go up and down. Okay. <clears throat> so I have two points here. And there's a couple of ways to do this. But we're going to use similar triangles to help us. And we use rise over run. All right. And so I'm going to try to use a, a little color here that might help us. We'll try. I don't know if this is going to be good enough or not. But we're going to try. Um, let's try, try green here. All right, so I have A and B, so I'm going to use rise over run. So I'm going to start at point A, and I'm going to go up. See, what I'm going to do is make triangles, all right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to one, two. So I went up two, then I go over one, two, three, and went over three. So my rise was two, my run was three, all right? And so we can connect those like that. All right. Now, if I continued that pattern, all right, one, two, up two, one, two, then over three, one, two, three, this would be my next dot. So I'm going to assume that this is my line right here. This is a two to three ratio. So I'm really going up and then over. Okay, and then so you can see that this forms a right triangle, all right? And then if I did it again, go up to over three, I form a similar triangle. Actually, those two are congruent. This is three, this is two. All right, <clears throat> what if I picked, a, what if I went higher? Let's say that I go up four, all right? So I'm going to pick, go up four, and so I'm going to go up four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four. Five, and I probably did not make my number right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's probably right there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I just didn't have my drawing right. And so that goes right there. Okay, because this line really probably is supposed to go like this. All right, and so this would be a four to six ratio. All right, so this right here would be a little bit different. But it's a little bit different. I mean, it's, it's bigger. And so they are similar. So if you think about it, 4 over 6 reduced is going to be 2 thirds. So it just depends on how you want to look at it. Now, if you're looking at the change in y over the change in x, I always like labeling them y, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So I will use the slope formula which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, and we just plug these in. If you notice, I labeled them up here, so I'm just going to put these in here. So y2 is 0. That's this guy right here. I know you can't see it. And really, the 2 represents the second order pair. The 1 represents the first order pair. And it doesn't matter. You can label either 1, 1, or 2. Okay. So I'm going to put this in here, so i got 0 minus. Now remember, there's a minus here, so I'm going to put a minus. But then I have a minus 2 as well for my y1. Over, i got a negative 2, then I can put a minus, and then I have a minus 5 for my x. If I was to simplify this, I would have 0 plus 2 
and negative 2 plus 5. And if you look, you'll see I'm going to get a positive 2 thirds. Now, one thing we need to kind of talk about, and we didn't really mention it, is the direction in which this line is going. The line is going up, and when it's up, it's positive. All right? If the line was going down, it'd be negative. And you can see our line is going up. We always read it in the direction of the x-axis from left to right. We go left to right. All right? And so when we read this, we actually see that this, this slope is uh, positive because it's increasing as it goes to the right. If it was negative, then you would have a line going down and it would be going, it would decrease, the line would decrease as you go to the right. Remember, you always go from left to right when you're looking at a graph, when you're looking at slope. Again, let's review. The slope is two-thirds. If, if I draw my line right, the line would be constantly at two-thirds. And so no matter what points you go up, rise, and run over and hit the line, you should always have a ratio of two-thirds. So it doesn't, it basically, no matter what, the slope, the line, the steepness of the line is going to be at a ratio of two-thirds. to thirds. So it's changing by a two to third ratio.